That's your way, then? Yeah. Are you sure you're going to be OK? Yes, fine. Plenty to keep me busy here. Right. Oh, remember, I'm going round the street from school to see Uncle Allen at the hotel. Right, well, don't be too laid back for your tea, then. OK. Do you think I should ask him to come back, you? No. No, I don't think so, Nina. Not just yet. Well, sometime soon, then? Look, I don't want you to hassle him about coming back. He's only just gone. Look, I'm sure he'll be back before long. I mean, he won't be enjoying hotel life, will he? Right. Hello there. Is that the order? Yes, it's all here. A quart of milk and a dozen eggs. How much do we owe you? Uh, two pounds exactly. Right. There you go. Thank you. So, are you busy? Busy enough. Have you time for me to show you what we're up to? Uh, not really, but uh, I'll make time. Yes. Right. You see this hole here? Mm-hmm. We're pretty sure it's a post hole for a structure of some kind. The wood's long gone, of course, but you see there's a pattern? Oh, yeah. Careful. We don't want you stepping on the trench and wrecking everything now, do we? Sorry. Where's it both now, Grace? Your pension, is it? I guess mine and Jean's. <laughs> it's calls to Newcastle as far as she's concerned. Aye, it must be great to have a bit of money in the bank, eh? Oh, there'll be less before long. She's booked the pair of us on a Caribbean cruise and we're flying out the day after tomorrow. That's great. Well, I'm sure you'll have a wonderful time. I uh, may be, but I think I'm a wee bit too old to go traipsing around the world. Oh, the way you go. How's Alan? Um, he's fine, thanks, fine. I expect both of you to be together again when I get back. Ah, well, you know the old saying, Grace, it takes two to tango. No, I don't know it. But I do know that when he does come back, you should take steps to make sure he stays. <laughs> Easier said than done, I'm afraid. Oh, Havers, it's easy enough done if you married him. Uh, yes, well, it's, uh, it's actually not quite as simple as that, Grace. Oh, that's you. Oh, good morning as well. Now, I'm looking for something special, and I don't fancy going all the way to Octan to get it, even if the prices are cheaper than yours. Well, we'll have to see what we can do then to save you your bus fare. What is it you're after? Delicacies for a special picnic that I'm preparing. Well, there's some nice stuff in tins round there. There's smoked mussels there, Mrs. Mack. Jean and I had them last week, and very good they were, too. Well, I'm glad to hear that Mrs McTaggart is indulging her fancies a bit. Please give her my congratulations at getting so much money at the auction. I'll do that, Mrs Mack. Pity about the source, though. What do you mean? Strong drink, Mrs Lachlan. You know my feelings on that subject. Her money was made from selling whiskey. Oh, aye. And I mind well a wee windfall you had yourself from an auction. That was just a, an object dart I sold. Oh, is that a fact? And here was everybody saying it was just a wee statue in very questionable taste. Well, that's about all there is to show so far. But we're hoping we'll uncover a lot more. Well, thanks. That was very interesting. Is there anything else interesting in Glendarrick? Such as? The local nightlife. <laughs> I don't think you'd find the rural a bundle of laughs. <laughs> no, I... Jam making's not really my kind of thing. <laughs> Mind you, there are discos in Octan and at the marina if you're into dancing. Are you? Uh, no, not really. You must get very bored. I'm too busy to be bored. I'm assistant manager of this estate. I also help run my mum's croft and help look after my wee brother and sister. Still, all work and no play. No boyfriend lurking in the background? <sighs> not at the moment, no. Well, I think I'd better be off. Nick, would you like to find a shovel you can lean on? Coming. See you sometime, Lynn. Well, well, the prodigal returns. Where have you been? Why didn't you keep in touch? I told you, I needed to get away to think things out. What things? My future. Well, where do you see it? In Glendarroch House. You'll be pleased to hear I've decided to stay on. So what are you doing here, then? I want to know what's been going on at Alt Mara while I've been away. If you'd been around, you wouldn't have to ask. Well, I wasn't. And I'm asking. 
So, a full report, please. Don't take that tone with me. I don't like it. Yes, well, your likes and dislikes aren't of paramount importance to me right now. Is that a fact? What about a bit of loyalty here? Why did you even consider walking out on me in the first place? Look, just leave it, will you? All right, all right. No explanations necessary. You're back. I suppose that's the main thing. Will you be staying here tonight, then? No, I'm going home. All right, I'll come round to your place. Not a good idea, David. Look, what the hell's the matter with you? Sorry I'm late. I got held up. You're not allowed into shellfish, are you, Leonard? Not in the least, Mary. And smoked mussels. Sounds delicious. <laughs> what are you two of it? Good morning, Mr. Jimerson. It's a very nice day, isn't it? Aye, we're having a picnic. Is that what you're doing, going for a picnic? Uh, Leonard, perhaps you'd take the picnic case to the car? Of course. What are you having your picnic? Mind your own beeswax. They're just digging, that's all. You see, David, it's an archaeological dig, so they're digging, right? Uh, just as long as they behave themselves and don't do too much damage, I suppose. How <laughs> quaint and old-fashioned. I can't imagine what misbehaviour they can get up to whilst looking for Roman remains. Swearing at each other in Latin, perhaps? I've met their sort before. Yes, well, I think you should meet them again. How do you mean? Extend the hand of hospitality. Invite them up to the house one night for a drink. No way. Once that crowd gets in through your door, you'll never get rid of them. Oh, believe me, David. I am more than capable of getting rid of anybody when it's necessary. Could that mean us? If she even considers it, it'll be hell to pay. Delicious, Mary. Quite delicious. As good as any of the meals you cooked for me. Oh, 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 that's very kind of you to say so. <laughs> Did you enjoy my smoked mussels? Mm. Did you do them yourself? I prepared them, yes. <laughs> oh, it's so lovely here. Relaxing. And so's the company. I do so agree. You don't look relaxed. Huh. What do you mean by that? Too many clothes on. Your hat. Why are you wearing your hat? Because I always wear a hat. Do you not like it? Oh, it's a lovely hat. But why don't you take it off? Just for you. <laughs> <laughs> There now. You look years younger. Such lovely hair. Well, I have been complimented on that before. I remember picnics like this. With Phyllis, that is. It's curious. I never thought I would feel again as comfortable with another woman. Leonard. I mean it. Hello, Isabel. Hello. Carol told me you might be here. Well, I just thought that getting out to the shop for a while was more important than having my lunch. Just wanted to be on my own for a bit. Although, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you. Oh, no, don't be daft. So, how are you coping with Alan being away? I don't know that I am. It's real lonely. And the worst bit is, uh, I haven't got anyone to blame, you know. Well, look, Greg's got some idea about getting Alan back to work. I mean, part-time. That might help. Might. Do you not think it might be easier for you if you went away for a while? No, no, I don't think so. And there's men are to be considered. Yeah, but surely you can make some arrangement. I mean, the men is old enough to look after herself. Uh, well, it's not that. Men has been awful good, you know, staying with me and... Ach, I just would like us both to be there if, if Alan decides to come home. I understand. So, how are things with you? Oh, couldn't be better. We had an absolutely great holiday. It was wonderful. Oh, nice to get away together. Hello again. Look, I wonder if I could ask you to do me a favour. That's what we're here for, sir. Could you take these into the kitchen and dry them off? It's impossible to get them dry in the camp. Uh, I'll deal with it personally. 
Would you like them to be cleaned and polished while I'm at it? No, just try them out, thanks. Straight away, sir. Look, um, what's a girl like you doing in a job like this? A job's a job. Yeah, still, it can't be very fulfilling, can it? You just drifted into it after school, I suppose? That sort of thing. Yeah, I know. There's not much work for school leavers in these rural parts, is there? Well, it hasn't been easy. But beggars can't be choosers. I had to find work. My parents need my wages. You know, soul support, that sort of thing. Yeah, tough. I'd have liked to have stayed on at school. But then there's my wee brother. He needs private medical attention. Are you serious? Oh, you've really got guts. Well, I should be grateful for what I have. Well, thanks. For the boots, I mean. Oh, they'll be ready when you are, sir. Like a baby. Oh, I'm sorry. I must have just dropped off. You were evidently having a very pleasant dream. You were smiling. I was greatly tempted just to let you sleep on. Yes. But then I was worried about you sleeping out in the open. This is not at all a good place for rheumatism. I don't have rheumatism. Oh, I didn't mean that you had. But I have. <laughs> Well, I suppose we'd best be getting back. Oh, it's early yet. Could we not sit on a wee bit longer? Oh, very well. A little longer, then. It's been such a lovely day. I will always treasure it. So will I, my dear. Society has a lot to answer for. You stop going on about it. Maybe she likes being a waitress. That's not the point. She's cut out for better things. You can tell she's got potential, that kid. It's a disgrace that she isn't allowed to develop it. Any plans for developing your own potential this evening? Well, just the same as I had last evening and the evening before that. Darts and dominoes in the public bar. Getting a bit of a bore. <laughs> Listen, I'm sorry I couldn't make it along to the dig this morning, but I fixed it with Eric. I'll definitely be there this afternoon. That's fine. Um, Nick was wondering if there was any alternative entertainment available. Oh, fed up with dominoes. I've got uh, spots before the eyes. Oh, <laughs> well, of course, we were thinking of laying on a cabaret for you, but uh, Sinatra is fully booked. <laughs> Why don't you go to the cinema now, Tom? Oh, what's on? I've no idea. Uh, Trish might know, though. Trish? Mm -hmm. Do you know what's on at the pictures in Octarn? Oh, they're showing something about the monsters with green teeth meeting the invasion of the Haiti Martians. Looking forward to that? Oh, I'm not into horror rubbish. Well, looks like you're stuck with darts and dominoes, then. The Skill Film Society is open to everybody, though. They're showing Hiroshima Mon Amour. Oh, are you going along? Oh, not for the likes of me, miss. I'm just a humble servitor. And I'm on duty tonight. Oh, that's a pity. Mm. I've seen it on television quite recently. Enjoyed? Well, given the subject in joy isn't exactly les mots juste. Alain René's directorial techniques were very innovative for their time, but have been largely subsumed into mainstream cinema. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. But it's still worth seeing, though. I mean, it effectively sums up the attitudes of that period and its fears of atomic warfare. But, well, yes, it sounds very interesting. Will there be anything else, sir? No. Thank you. Hi, I'm back. Anything I should know about? Come in. Well, I've got some things I need to do in the computer room. Come in, Sam. What's this? A summons to the headmaster's study? We have something to talk about. What? Discretion. Ah, uh -huh. and just who's been indiscreet? You, at the hotel. You dropped certain hints in front of Mrs. McTaggart and Mrs. Lackland about our past. They didn't pick them up. Only because they had other things on their mind. But other times, other circumstances. Don't you ever do that again. I won't say anything in front of Fiona. Don't you say anything in front of anyone. I want you to go back to pretending there's nothing between us. There never was, and there never will be. Well, I'm not sure I can do that, Craig. Eh, well, we'll just have to wait and see, Fergus. He might come out of it, and he might not. That must be very difficult for you, Isabel. Oh, for anyone. Ah, but for you especially. Be folk like me are used to living on their own. You're not. Well, I'm not exactly on my own, Fergus. I've got men off her company. Yes, you have. And she'll be a constant reminder about Alan and what you've lost. That's very shrewd, Fergus. But, oh, I like to think of the lassie as a, as a link to the future. Aye, it's best to keep an eye on that. And old Max certainly trying. How do you mean? Well, she's lonely. She's trying to cure it by taking up with this guy that's staying at the hotel. She's away in a picnic with him. Well, well, now that could start stories. <laughs> if it was anybody else, she'd be the very one who'd be spreading them. Ah, oh, silly old bat. I, I can't think what that man sees in her. Oh, it's easy once you get into it, but I don't think higher maths will ever be my strong point. Well, if you persevere, you'll get there in the end. Oh. And, uh, how are your other subjects coming on? Oh, it's all right, okay. Good. And Carlin. You haven't asked how Isabel is. Aren't you interested? Of course I am. It's just that I feel guilty, that's all. Oh, what's the point in that? I can't help it. It's not your fault. Just as long as you believe that Isabel cares a lot for you, an awful lot. I believe that, but it just makes matters worse. Oh. I didn't like her when I first came to Glendarroch. I resented her trying to take the position of being my mum. And you weren't even married. How do you... How do you feel about her now? Very differently. I couldn't respect anyone more. And looking back over the last few weeks, you must feel the same. She's very kind. There's no denying that. Well, then why don't you come back? No, Mena. I'm glad I'm not staying there. I was hurting her as much as I was hurting myself. Well, you could come and see her. No, I don't think that's a good idea either. Well, come for tea then. Or you could at least do that. <sighs> oh, done it again, haven't you? All right, all right. When? Soon. Oh, come on. Can't you take a joke? I don't like being made a fool of. Especially not by a poor, underprivileged peasant girl. According to Joanna, she's one of the brightest pupils ever to come from the local school. Brilliant academic record. University material. Mm, knows a thing or two about films, too. Look, why do you think she was sending me up, huh? Well, I can think of several reasons, actually, but, um, perhaps you should ask her. I just thought it'd be nice to have a chat, Ellen. Right. At uh, what time? 6.30 it is. See you then. Goodbye. Do you think you'll agree? Well, I haven't put it to him yet, so I'd rather do that face to face. Good. I think Isabel will appreciate it. Why don't you come with me? How about you, then? Oh, Mr. Stapleton, I'm sorry, I really am. About what? I forgot about your boots. They're not dry yet. But I promise I'll be ready tomorrow, all polished and shiny. Now, come off it. I've been speaking to Mrs. Ross Gifford about you. Oh, I'm not going to lose my job, sir, am I? I mean, I just forgot about your boots. No, you're not going to lose your job, Trish. I mean, how would your impoverished parents survive? Not to mention your invalid brother. So what was Mrs. Ross Gifford saying, then? 
Just that you're very bright, highly educated and filling in time before going to university. Guilty secret, so eh? Look, why did you make a fool of me back then? Me? A simple country girl? How could I possibly make a fool of a sophisticated man of the world like you? Unless, of course, you were just coming on like a conceited wee boy. Excuse me? Oh, dear, let me take the picnic case. Oh, that's very kind, Leonard, but I think I can manage. Have a nice picnic, did you? Yes. Where'd you go? Ignore him. What? Oh, all right. I'll, um, call for you tomorrow and take you to a new place I've found for afternoon tea. Oh, that would be very nice. Half past three, if that's convenient. Most convenient. Enjoy the smoked mussels. What do you know about smoked mussels? No, I had some once. Gave me heartburn. Leonard, would you care to come in for a wee cup of tea before you go? Uh, thank you. David, I am a businesswoman. If I pay for expert advice, I listen to it. And what does an accountant know about running an estate? He doesn't have to. His job is number crunching, and the numbers didn't crunch. He was adamant it was too soon to contemplate selling out Namara, hence my need to stay in gainful employment. At Glendarrick. Oh, where else? So you were prepared to dump out Namara, that the money might give you the go-ahead? Yes, I was. <sighs> I don't know, I don't think I could cope with it at the moment. Alan, I've got an under-manager doing the job right now. He can carry on until you're ready. You'll soon pick things up. Look, surely it's better than sitting around the hotel all day. And you are good at your job. Yes, I know I was. Oh, there you go. But I have no memory of being good at it here. See, the job I have here is different from the one I remember. If that makes any sense. Yes, Alan. Look, I, I just need time to think it over, all right? It was a funny way of putting it, that's all. But I am perfectly capable of getting rid of people when I want to. Do you have any particular people in mind? Since we were talking about the archaeologists, I would have thought it was patently obvious who I meant. There's not much that's obvious about you. Yes, well, I'm flattered, David. But don't you think you're making rather a fuss about inviting them back to the house for a drink? Never. Anyway, I need another drink now. I suppose you want one. Why not? 